But what do you see? What do you see out there as the state of the union, if you will, for the industry? Sure. I think one of the biggest challenges for the industry has been downward check pre uh, pressure uh, over the last couple of years here with a real focus on increased costs. You look at cost of goods, they've gone up about 8% year to date. Uh, you've seen through the, through the economic downturn, consumers still went out and ate, but they went out and didn't, they got the $40 bottle of wine versus the $80 bottle of wine. Or they went from you know, eating at your local independent to now, now maybe eating at Applebee's. So everyone has experienced downward pressure. You, know, you look at the chains, Applebee's, Chili's, Friday's, they're all doing the you know, three courses for $9.99. How's a local um, independent compete with that? It's very difficult. So that's been a very hard thing for the uh, operators to understand. I think one thing that's here to stay is value. Even at the higher price points, people are, they want to know what they're paying for. You know, if I'm paying 100 bucks for dinner or if I'm paying $10 for dinner, I want to make sure that I'm getting the best value for my meal. And as you said earlier, a lot of that is about hospitality guest experience, personalizing it, which is even more important on an independent level because that's why people choose independence over the, uh, the chains because they have a more personalized local experience. So we're really preaching to our clients to make sure that you're connecting with the guests, you're reaching out to them, you're following up with them, you're using your social media, you're trying to create frequent touch points so you can own the consumer a little bit more. You know, so when they come in, you know them in name. We were sitting with our client the other day, and I was sitting at a table with the general manager, and 10 customers walked out in a row, and she knew the name of every single one. I mean, that's powerful stuff, and that just doesn't happen. I mean, that, that is a conscious effort to reach out and, and know your guests. So that's really where I think the consumer needs to understand, this restaurant cares about me. So I think that's one of the biggest things. The other thing we've continued to see is uh, greater consumer awareness on food issues. Uh, you know, everyone's always wondering what the next food trend in is. We're really kind of articulating it as better food. And people, different people define that differently, whether it's local, sustainable, organic, farm to fork, what have you. But you need to make sure that you're really thinking about what your consumer wants. And I think on the other side of that is you really need to avoid the greenwashing that we see a lot of people trying to do, where they're saying they're doing something. I was sitting in a restaurant the other day here in New England, and there was local asparagus on the menu. Now, we all know that's a lie, because you don't have local <laughs> asparagus anytime it's spring here. So it, the consumer's smarter than that these days, and you need to give them credit for that. Uh, there's some wonderful chefs out there doing some great things, and there's some wonderful not chef driven restaurants out there doing some great things. I think it's a matter of looking at best practices from your peers, best practices from the chains, and really even outside your core focus. If you're a quick service restaurant, there's probably a lot of customer service uh, steps that you can learn from finer dining restaurants. And if you're a fine dining restaurant, there's many operational controls and system sides of things that you can learn from quick service. So don't just think about the group that you play in. You know, to really think about what you can learn from everyone out there. It, it's an amazing range of skill sets and practices across all types of restaurants, and every one of them has something you can learn. 